All right, well, hello YouTube. What what's up? Welcome. We're going to we're going to showcase my build today here. And uh it's a two-handed greatsword build, which I find it incredibly fun. It's uh it's 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 kind of broken, but you know what? Why not? Let's let's make use of this build while it lasts. So, the build is a two-handed greatsword. The video is kind of it's going to be kind of long, so I'm going to break it down into like different sections. So first off, we're going to do a quick build where, where we showcase the whole build and tell you exactly what it is for those who don't want to, you know, get into too much details. There's the build in the, in the beginning and that's it. If you're here just for the build, we're going to do that in the beginning. Then I'll showcase a little bit of strategies. I'll showcase some gameplay demos. We'll, we'll even fight a boss just to show you guys about this, how this build works. And then I will showcase well i'll show you guys where to get everything that you need in this build now for those who are uh haven't gotten to this point uh, i will try to avoid spoilers as much as possible except for that maybe one boss it's not even a story boss i guess so if you're okay with that you could keep watching if not that's cool the build is there in the beginning um and uh yeah you know, make sure you like and subscribe if you uh, if you enjoy this build and uh, catch me live on Twitch. All the links will be in the description below. So, what are we gonna do with this build? Uh, this build is a dual uh, dual greatsword build. Like I said, it uses two very specific uh, greatswords. Uh, you can you can change your main sword to whatever you want. Any greatsword you like, you can change it. It doesn't matter. Uh, but the the key component of this build is this one, the one in my left hand. It's called the Sword of Milos, and uh, I'll show you where to get it later if you if you continue watching. But what this does, it's two things. Um, as you can see, it causes blood loss, which is nice. We're not relying too much on the blood loss, but oops, why did I unequip that? Uh, but if if you, it doesn't say here in the description, but when you kill any enemy with this sword equipped, even if you're not proficient with it, it'll give you five FP back for every enemy killed. And that is the key to this build where you use your stomp as much as you want. This is the Horfrost stomp. I will also show you where to get this. This is one of the most broken abilities in the entire game. Use the stomp and both my swords causes blood loss buildup, and I also use the cold, um, um, what's the word called? Cold ashes, I guess, uh, on 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 the flame bird. Anyway, on the flame bird, I mean. So, how this build works? You equip the flame bird, and you equip the sword of Milo's. And the play style is very simple. You want to be jump attacking as much as possible. That's your main attack. That's how you're going to stagger most bosses and enemies in one hit. For the most part, you're going to kill enemies in one shot with this one jump attack. That's how your build should be. But for these enemies, I'm going to showcase this is a kind of a late game area. These enemies have a ton of HP. So this is how you do it. You start with the Horfro Stomp and you do a jump attack. Another jump attack. Boom, they're staggered already. These things have a lot of HP. And as you can see, I got some of my HP FP back while I kill these things. Another another showcase. Boom, they're stun locked. You just go away. Do that again. And their stance broken. Easy. Easy. I'm going to showcase one more area before I show the build any further. Uh, let's go to this village. I'm going to show you how easy it is for regular mobs. Now, these mobs are super tanky. Uh, what about regular mobs? You just Horfrost stomp, go make this uh, every area in this game a cakewalk. Like, as long as you have at least two mobs together and you kill them with the Horfrost stomp, you're going to get all your FP back. Sorry. I guess I didn't aim it. You can see my I got all my FP back. Two enemies. Stomp. Boom. Got my FP back. There's a bunch of enemies here. 
Boom. Got my FP back. Boom. Got my FP back. This is crazy. Even if they survive your Horfrost Storm, they have the jump attack to deal with. Now, we have a few things to make our jump attacks even stronger, which I'll show now. So, armor, you want to wear anything you want. I will showcase the stats in just a second. Um, this is the first one. I use the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. You could use whatever you want in place of this, but I like to get some backstabs in the middle of, of just, you know, exploring dungeons and whatnot, just to get that little HP back uh, and, you know, save my flask. This is the bread and butter. The Claw Talisman makes your jump attacks even stronger. And this Talisman, the Carrion Filigrate Press, makes your Orfrost Stomp cost only uh, 8 FP, I believe. Um, let me, let me, sh let me see. Let me double check. I have, I have 127 FP as of now. I use this and I have 119. So how much was that? Was that 9 FP? 8 FP, I think. Sorry, my math is wrong. 8 FP. So it goes down from 10 to 8. It's not necessary. But it's really, really nice. Um, oh. You're getting all your FP back. You can just spam this. You don't even need to melee. Anyway, let's go back to, uh, to this. So the build is uh, Flame Burge. You enhance it with Cold and the Horfrost Stomp. And use the Sword of Milo's. Uh, we're we're going to get to the rest of the equipment later. Armor, you can wear whatever you want. Uh, for the talismans, you need these two. The filigan, uh, carrion filigrate crest, and you need the claw talisman. And the rest, you could put, a, put whatever you want. Also, for armor, you could put whatever you want as long as you have medium load. However, however, this chest piece is what you want. This is called the raptor's black feathers. What it also does is it strengthens jump attacks even further. So, um, this is going to add on top of this damage. Now, you know, dual-handed jump attacks stagger the bosses really, really easily. Or, like, just about any mob. So, if it doesn't survive, if it doesn't survive, just keep attacking it with jump attacks, and you will trigger the poise break. And when a boss's poise is broken, you can go in for a critical hit and get some of that HP back again with the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. So it's really cool. This is one of the reasons why I use this a lot. Anyway, um, now the stats, the stats for this build. Now this is, I know the video says it's a level 100 build, so I was a little bit over leveled. Uh, but you can compare my stats. The stats, what you want is you want to build up your strength and dexterity to the weapon requirements, not more than that. So the what you need for Sword of Milos is 15 strength and 19 dex. And at this scales uh, very well with dex. And so does Flame Burge. You need 15 strength and 14 dex. So what you want to do is get up to 19 strength, sorry, 19 dex and 15 strength and put the rest of your points into vigor, endurance and intelligence. You Early on, you want to prioritize health and stamina and then keep pumping up, uh, you know, intelligence as much as you want. I have 14 faith, but that's just because I started with, I believe, the Confessor. So they start off with like a higher faith than the rest of the classes. So uh, anyway, but you also want to make sure you have 10 arcane. Why? Because you don't need to, but I equip the Dragon Communion Seal. It weighs nothing and it requires 10 arcane and 10 faith. So I can cast a few, you know, really quality of life spells like removing poison, removing rot and stuff like that. So there's really no harm in putting 10, well, like investing one point in arcane or or at least getting up to 10 so you can use this. It's really good. Uh, the staff, I don't really use spells. You can. It's a very good, uh, like this build is very versatile. You can use whatever spells you want because you're going to have a lot of intelligence. I find that Meteorite Staff still at this level 100 range is still like it outperforms most of the um, 
most of the uh, the other staffs in this game. You should be writing this down? Probably. All right. Well, uh, so now that you know the build, it's, it's really simple. You rush in. Let's just showcase a boss. Because uh, we've showcased some enemies. Now let's just go showcase a boss. Where was that? Was it here? Oh, I forgot to tell you about the flasks. Um, one important thing about the flask is you want to mix... Um, Oops, not this one. Sorry, I'm, I was talking about the Physic Flask. So you want to mix these two. The one that makes your attacks more likely to break enemy stances. It is super useful for boss fights. And then the next one is you want to, you know, boost your magic attacks. This is uh, mostly for our Horfrost Stomp. Stomp will do more damage. And when you spam a little bit and then you come back to this uh, physical attacks, you're going to break the enemy stance really easily. This is great for bosses. Anyway, let's uh, let's head to a boss and uh, we'll uh, continue from there. All right, we're uh, we're just about ready to fight a boss, and uh, we'll showcase you how this goes. This is a trap. Okay, so the moment you touch this, I believe the boss spawns. So you drink up your flask. And voila, we're ready. So you start off with the stomp. Oh, wow. Dodges attacks. And his stance is broken already. Boom. And he's actually gone. Whoa, whoa, hello. Hey, hey, hey. Chill, dude. Dodge. Okay. He's blowing up. No, I don't know this attack. Okay, okay, okay. And his stance is broken already. And as you can see, I'm getting my HP back while I do this critical. Oh, wait, he's not dead. Right. Easy. So. Really, bro? I'm in the middle of a video and you're... Selling fucking followers? Okay. Wow. <laughs> really? really? <laughs> Dude, these, these Twitch bots are... Okay. So, uh, let's... We're back here again. And I will show you a few things uh, that you need for this build. So, first off, you're going to need the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. This, uh, well, it's not up necessary but i'll show you anyway because it's you can get this like super early like you could just run straight to this dungeon in the first area and you can get this so this is the first area that you start off uh you start off in limgrave you head over here you go all the way here to this catacombs the death touch catacombs you defeat the boss here you're gonna get the assassin's crimson dagger easy peasy not a big deal you also get the the uchi katana in this dungeon if you didn't know. All right. So next up, we got. Um, uh, next up, you have the Claw Talisman. Now, the Claw Talisman is in Stormvale Castle. I'm going to show you real quick where. All right. We, we didn't get the bug. <laughs> All right. We're here at the Stormvale Castle uh, and we're at the Rampart Tower Bonfire. Um, to get the Claw Talisman, you want to head up this way. This is this is a salt free YouTube video. We don't we don't die to to gravity here. Um I'm pretty sure you should have taken left. Maybe I, I might have taken the long way around, but okay. Um oh no, you wanna head up here, ignore the enemies if you want, or kill them. Doesn't matter. Jump up. I doubt they have ranged uh oh. Thanks. When you drop down here, there's going to be a bird, so be careful. I think I took a little fall damage. Okay, that's fine. Who knows? I might even speed this up. Jump up here. Jump up here. Be careful. Oh, my, my sword is giving me FP back from some enemies dying, apparently. Uh, you want to climb up this ladder ASAP. 
there's like three enemies here, so if you want, you could kill them or just ignore them. Or or that's that's gonna happen. It's just easier to kill them. Okay. So the talisman is going to be on this dead body. Easy peasy. Right, now let's move on to the next talisman. Uh the next talisman is the Carry Carrion Filigrate Press. Now you get this. It's it's a long uh now, I'll tell you where to get this. You get this to, uh, at this side of Grace Road to the manor on the way to... Uh, to... What's this manor called? The Carrier Manor. Now, when you get here first, this is going to be a hidden wall. So you need to, like, make sure you dispel that illusion. And this dude here, this giant, will sell you the crest only when you have become friends with Blight. Now, it's a long process. In order to become friends with Blight, what you need to do is you're gonna need to, I'm not gonna show you the entire process, but I'm just gonna talk about it. You're gonna need uh, to head to Mistwood Ruins in, in Lernia. This is like east of where you started, right? So you're gonna hear howling in the woods. When you hear howling, it means you've got the first step done. When you hear the howling, go back to the Church of Ella and you talk to the Santa Claus merchant there and ask him about the howling. He will show you a gesture. You go back to the Misford Ruins um, and you need to use that gesture in a specific spot. Well, not very specific. You don't have to be very specific. You just need to be in the ruins itself and use the gesture. You will know where you are in the ruins when you, when you see a giant bear sleeping. That's the ruin. So you can avoid the bear if you want. You just have to do the um, the gesture and Blight will come down. You can talk to him. He'll become friends with you. Once he becomes friends with you, I think you also have to help him kill this knight over here. Again, this all of this is, is in the starting zone. You can do it quickly, the first thing. Uh, you help him kill this guy. He will... Uh, he will tell you that if you meet the blacksmith EG, tell him I sent you, which is the person I just uh, showed you guys. He's the blacksmith over here. Uh, where? Sorry, give me... Yeah, this blacksmith. So once you become friends with him and he sends you over to this blacksmith, he will sell you the fili filigreed crest. As far as the rest of the things, you could equip whatever else charm you want. This is an open slot. You can equip the Earth Tree's favor, which you get from the, the first catacombs. Um, this is a very open slot. You can equip the Radagon Sword Seal. You could equip whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long as you have the Claw Talisman and Raptor's Black Feathers. Now, where to get the Raptor's Black Feathers? Uh, you're going to need to go to, I believe, um, Sage's Cave, which is over here. Now, I'm not going to show you how to actually get it, but it's in this cave. Go there. It's one of the coolest boss fights in the game. You, you clear this cave, you'll get this this uh, this chest piece. Easy. Flame Burge. Where to get the Flame Burge? Now, Flame Burge is... You'll obtain this in Red Main Castle. Uh, only after you defeat the boss. The story boss. I'm not going to spoil who it is. But once you defeat the story boss, you're going to have to come back here at another point in time where all the other doors will be open. When you explore this castle, you will get the, uh, the Flame Burge. It's not too hard to get. So, there's that. Now, for the main thing. The Sword of Milos. Hey, Aquatic, what's up, man? We're recording for YouTube right now. Um, so, now, this is one of the most complicated swords to get, which is why I saved it for the last. Uh, once you progress through the story in Roundtable Hold, eventually you're going to see this door open. And you're going to see a red phantom NPC just sitting here. At first, he's going to refuse to talk to you. But eventually, when you make your way to... I'm just going to name drop in areas without too much spoilers. Once you, I, I believe once you head to the sewers uh, and come back to this, this, I believe he will start talking to you and he will give you a key to, uh, 
basically free his corporeal fresh flesh um it's a very complicated route to the sewers and i honestly don't want to um keep this video too long but you head to the sewers and you open up the 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 his cell his jail cell and you either kill him on the spot or you just free him talk to him and you tell him to to be free and you come back here and you will advance his quest line you could uh you talk to him he will ask you to give him seeds uh of, of something hang on let me show you what it is i don't i forget the name some sort of seeds he he, he asks you to give some sort of seeds right seedbed curse that's what it is so you need to give him at least one or two in order to advance his quest line so i'll show you the location of one uh, so you go to the East Capital Rampart. How are you doing, Aquatic? What's up, man? So you make your way... Just follow the path I take. I might just speed this up. That's where it'll it'll be. As you can see over there, that's where the first seed bit curse is going to be. So you climb this ladder and it's going to be right there in front of your eyes. Well, not right here, but you just climb up. And voila, the first seedbed curse is going to be here. So the other seedbed curse, uh, let me teleport to that area. We're going to do a jump. Okay. So, we're here at the uh, West Capital Rampart. At the bonfire, you just... Uh, you can drop down over here. Make sure you don't die. You drop down once again. You want to head over to this these trees. There's dogs, but don't mind them. I'm gonna jump here, 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 and you will be in an alternate version of the round table hold. Um, the seedbed curse is here somewhere. It might be in the same place. It is in the same place where you find uh, the red invader NPC. right over here so you're gonna get two seedbed curses once you do that you're gonna go back to your own version of the round table hold again and go back to uh where that npc was he will he will ask you for a duel and he will give you a location the location is uh this place right here you can make it through from the capital rampart you go back and across this you fight him you beat him you'll get the sword easy peasy it's a long quest line but you know there there are a few other things you could do to make this build even more uh amazing if you want to do focus on sorcery you could uh just use the the sealed magic hang on let me show you that uh you could if you just if you don't like to move around if you if you have a situation where you could stand in one place and snipe an enemy i i suggest you use this one there are magic mag magicus magicus i cannot pronounce this i'm sorry what it does is it allows you to uh it amplifies your magic so if you see right now 
My my great bow will do 758, right? You put this on and then you do this. Remember, it was 758 before. 1024. That's a significant improvement. But what if you want to do even more? There's another way to do it. Now, you could use the determination ash of war on this dagger. It doesn't matter what affinity it is. Equip the staff. Equip the dagger on your right hand. Use the Terra Magicus. Use the dagger spell. And your damage will be buffed up even more. 1303. Again, these are really strong enemies, so... I don't really... Okay. <laughs> anyway, that is it for the build. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully you, uh, you give it a try. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. Or you can visit me on Twitch when I'm live. Uh, one, one last thing to talk about, uh, the Horfrost Stomp. And why I don't use... Um, Say any other infusion apart from cold is because or frost will scale with your weapon level more than any other thing weapon level and then it scales with cold infusion and cold infusion already scales well with your magic stat i mean your intelligence stat so that's why you you buff up int as much as you can and it also scales a little bit with dex so what what you what you, what I have here is are two weapons that d inflict frost and bleed at the same time. If an enemy has high enough health to survive being frosted, and stunned and criticaled and poise blocked, uh, broken, I mean, you keep on hitting it, it'll eventually bleed as well, and that's just a lot of DPS. So. That's the main idea behind why I chose these two weapons. Both have bleed and this one has also got frost build up. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the guide and uh, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you around next time. Okay, as for the Horfrost Tromp, which is the most OP ability in this game, you get this at Lernia of the Lakes, I get the west part. Um... This is the Caria Manor, so just to the south of it, south southeast, there's a lake over here, and there's going to be an invisible uh, beetle that you need to kill in order to get the Horfrost Stomp. All right.